Hello everyone, we are team number four and we are presenting Nike's strategy formula. On the next couple of slides, we have created a toes matrix to generate a number of possible alternative strategies. Some of them are to continue taking advantage of brand loyalty, utilize strong distribution and manufacturing channels to proceed distribution tactics and strengthen distribution channels to adapt to possible future economic recession. I will leave this slide up for a couple of seconds so you can go through them. Nike's business strategy revolves around differentiation and vertical integration. The most efficient way to achieve profit maximization is by executing strategic elements such as control retail, control the brand. Nike's investment into its heavy, very own capacity operated direct to consumer retail business was made to tighten links with consumers, establish brand, establish brand trust in emerging markets, and control how the company is perceived. Online, direct-to-consumer sales are projected to develop strongly and will offer significant opportunities as they become more commonplace in emerging markets and as distribution networks improve. Our second strategy element is to focus on core business. Nike's 2013 sell of Cole Ham and Umbro have allowed the company to focus on its stronger, strongest asset the Nike brand. The brand strength will be used in an effort to solidify global market share. This is a key strategic objective going forward and opportunities to achieve it such as the 2014 FIFA World Cup and the 2016 Summer Olympics both, both to be held in Brazil have presented themselves as platform for brand marketing. Our third element is using digital media. After using specialized digital marketing agencies for years, Nike has brought the operation of all social media related activity back into the company. With the use of stati statistical tools, they might be able to know what the consumers want in real life and respond to them. This was done in an effort to gain managerial insight into how consumers interact with the brand, but may be a risk as social media has been exceptional for the company thus far. Maximizing efficiency of this increasingly important aspect of its business will be, will be a major challenge for Nike. Our last element of the strategy will be product development and segmentation. Nike's consumer expect and receive a constant stream of new products. Continuing to provide this type of product diversity will be a key challenge for the company going forward especially as it expands into new markets where tastes, different functional demand and sporting preferences may differ. Developing market segmentations will definitely be a challenge. Here we have listed opportunities that we feel should be used as platforms for Nike to execute its main strategies. In regards to fashion development, Although the Nike brand's successful position is becoming increasingly led by technology, sports-inspired fashion is projected to grow strongly through the year 2017. An increased developmental focus on brands such as Hurley and Converse as fashion brands could provide solid returns for Nike. Increasing store numbers is also very important. The company cites Nike's brand credibility and authenticity as a key to its brand equity. This is because Nike stores combat imitation and work as effective marketing tools by showcasing innovation. Nike should push harder to open stores in new markets where the brand identity is less solid. Nike can also greatly benefit from e-commerce. 
The development of online sales is one of the cornerstones of the company's growth in the United States. The company has also resolved to spend more on digital marketing and less on traditional channels, which we feel is a smart move. The global digital network is developing rapidly, and Nike could greatly strengthen its global share by having an effective e-commerce model. From an international aspect, Nike has a great opportunity to take command of the sportswear market in Brazil. The 2014 FIFA World Cup and 2016 Summer Olympics are both set to be staged in Brazil, and Nike's sponsorship of the host national soccer team at the World Cup will give the company tremendous exposure. This table illustrates data that reflects absolute value and compound annual growth rates for athletic footwear and apparel in Brazil. As you can see from the graph, consumers in Brazil are projected to be most interested in performance clothing, sports-inspired clothes, performance footwear, and sports-inspired footwear. All products that Nike offers in a very diverse and extensive catalog. So again, we feel that Brazil is a great opportunity for Nike to expand into a diverse market and a large one at that. Successfully identifying and implementing a strategic sweet spot can be just as challenging as it is rewarding, especially for a company like Nike. Nike must find success in this specific sweet spot if it wishes to generate top sales at top prices in the athletic footwear and apparel industry. Nike's sweet spot falls in between customers' needs and the company's abilities. By way of excellent strategic planning, Nike has been able to convey and stir emotion in potential consumers when marketing its newest featured items. These emotional marketing tactics have created a sense of need in customers which consequentially establishes brand loyalty and allows Nike to combat competitors' attempts of selling equal or, equal or higher quality footwear apparel at lower prices. If Nike were to underperform in maximizing utilization of its sweet spot, consequences could be the result. Customers could respond with increased price sensitivity and or complacency of Nike's quality. Either of these outcomes must be avoided as they both have potential to decrease sales. Through our research, we've determined that Nike's propitious niche is marketing. Nike is known as a marketing company that has found success in consumer brand awareness and brand power. The company achieved rapid growth by employing aggressive marketing tactics and continuous innovation in the ever-changing market. Nike has continued its focus on marketing a diverse selection of the highest quality products by identifying opportunities for joint ventures or acquisitions that assist in areas such as product portfolio expansion, achieving economies of scale, accessing untapped markets, and widening the range of sports in which the company produces products. Nike's core competencies lie in marketing, research and development, and extensive supply chain management capabilities. These key factors have assisted Nike with successfully executing a differentiation strategy that has provided the company with a competitive advantage in the industry. Catchphrases such as Just Do It and the Swoosh logo have given Nike an upper hand in brand identity and brand power among competitors. Marketing through innovation can be viewed as the company's center of gravity. As a group, we've concluded that successful execution of the strategies discussed throughout this presentation have allowed and will continue allowing Nike to protect itself from competitors, especially those operating under a cost leadership oriented business model. Nike's innovative branding and advertising tactics have established a unique sense of loyalty in customers that explains Nike's dominance in sales despite its higher prices. Nike has led the athletic footwear and apparel industry in product differentiation and must continue to do so if it wants to continue its lead by continuously releasing 
variations of its already extensive product line. The firm's strategic choice and marketing niche are not only appropriate but highly recommended based on our research. The data tables on this slide reflect these conclusions by comparing Nike to Adidas, its most fierce competitor. As can be seen from the tables, Nike's revenues have topped those of Adidas year after year and this can be heavily attributed to Nike's significant investment into marketing.